for an extension of that going on, which we planted last year. The run running back to the highway was one that didn't get burned in the fire, so that's been in 25 odd years. Um, and again, a nice mix, not picking gums that are going to grow up to 80 foot tall, that's not what we're after. Um, and having the, the mix with, with wattles or uh, in this case here, wetter gully, so there's quite a few blackwoods in that one. Mm. Other interesting things to observe here is the pivot comes round, the end done, and the water's catching this corner of these trees. So they're getting so much more water. And look mm. at, as you go on mm. up the bank, sure it's going up the bank and it's drier, <laughs> but also it's not getting that mm. extra water. And the other thing is distances. I've now moved, so we're five and a half metre instead of five metre trying to get two meters in from the fence because what I find especially when you put wattles once they grow up after about 10 or 15 years you know, the branches are all over and they start to short out my yeah. electric wire too much and yeah. this is pasture that has gone to seed over the years so there's a high seed bank in there so when you when you spray this um, the first good rain and a bit of temperature and you get a flush of growth out of there which will be before you know it all the sprayed spots, you won't recognize where you've been because of the regrowth. Mm. And really, if you, yeah. if you want to plant these sort of sites and have a really good growth rate and high success rate, you try and exhaust that seed bank first. So that means coming here three times with, a, with a, either a, a, a quad bike with a little spray unit on it or a knapsack and you just spray these spots out and when it regrows you hit them again so i would have done this let's say yeah if 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 will said to me i want you to um supply and manage this little planting project i would say that the first time you sprayed this would have been in last um october and then you would hit it again before if you get good follow-up rain and good germination you'd hit it again before christmas then you'd come up in January, February when the little digger is on site and just loosen the holes up, which really on this soil is not necessary, but you could do it, if it especially if it's heavier soil, it's a bit compacted. You'd loosen the holes up when it's dry and then you'd come back, um, say, about now and hit the regrowth on these loose spots and then you, when you come in to plant, you literally only have to carry your plants and your uh, planting gun and then the tree guards afterwards. Whether you need to do any cultivation here, probably not, look at that, that's, I mean, beautiful. If you had to do cultivation here, if you had your own little digger or you've got a digger here for some reason, um, that's out in this area, if you, if you say, say you're, you're putting a new pivot in and you've got a little excavator here for some reason, while you're doing this, it'd certainly pay to uh, get him to spend an hour just loosening all these holes up because when complaint I'll do a couple of and that's why I like Maddox that's all you have to do with a Maddox one one hit like that in soil like this and then you can plant it with this tool so you could be walking along here with uh, what do you want in the front row Will? Uh, the taller a youth or something um, black hood especially or winds this way black hood or uke yep. yep so you'd have these you'd have these seedlings in in your bag or in your kidney tray black hood in the front here too yeah. <coughs> that's got a good root system I prefer that eucalypts a bit on the light side but that's okay it'll go I mean this, imagine, so I'm carrying these plants in a, in a tray and I work, and all these spots are like this. Just give it a turn. See how that root ball is sitting just below the soil surface? Give that a tug, that's nice and tight. So all of this, so this is really Coming back to what I said about, you just look at the effort I'm putting in doing this. And I'm not making it harder than it is, <laughs> or look harder. It's, you know, to, to just chip the grass off 
when it's when it's still alive is hard work and when it's dead and it's only just died it's still hard work so when the roots actually are so decomposed that the soil becomes more friable because all the roots have rotted that's when it's easy to to plant then so you wouldn't even have to do that but I mean if you you know if you do a, a planting this size and you haven't got one of these you wouldn't go to any trouble getting one. You just plant them with a mat. So the mattock, once the ground is loose, you open it up, put your seedling down there, and just pack the soil around, making sure that you get it in to that sort of depth. What you would do is you would dip that tray before you come down here in a trough so that it's really wet. The seedlings would be dripping wet in the tray um, and if you're planting you know like we talked about in autumn and if the soil moisture is not good enough you'd have a little tank out here and give them all a drink there's a good good uh, research project was done in the dry South Australia dry country where they planted thousands and thousands of trees so they, so they did several rows and in a couple of the rows they gave each plant 125 milliliters of water at planting time and the other rows got nothing waiting for the rain and the growth rate and the survival rate was uh, I can't remember the figures but it was huge mm. the difference so just giving them a cup full of water <coughs> to, to, to demonstrate this tool um, what are we going to put in here one of these or banksia? Yeah, banksia's fine. Banksia is good, I like banksias. So for those of you who haven't knocked these plants out of the of, out of these pots, uh, don't tap the pot here. That's that's just tapping the pot onto the root board. Um, you you hit the edge of the pot on something hard, so toe of your boot if you're already down here is good or Something like that is good, or your palm of your hand if you've got a tough palm. That way the root ball accelerates out. If you look at these pots, they've got ridges inside, which are called root trainers. And when you look at the root ball, the roots, see those roots that hit these ridges, they start growing straight down. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do anything with that root system. As you've seen, I just plant them. Uh, all the systems that you should really have out here should be these sort of things either that or the cell trays they're all designed for forestry type situations where there's no time to do the the gardening australia root pole <laughs> teasing that's very applicable to pot to plants that grow in round pots where the roots tend to grow round and round but these pots are designed to prevent that so the roots hit these ridges, grow straight down, get air pruned down below, which initiates new roots, and they get a good a good root ball that you don't have to touch when you're planting. So root tickling is just completely waste of time. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> and, and and counterproductive. Yeah. You're just disturbing a perfectly happy root system. Okay. So you're taking a core out, and then that's probably getting a little bit low. So I've just gone a little bit deep here. So if you if you want to do this perfect, you put a little bit of soil in the bottom, that's better. Now you can use your hands to push the soil in the side or you could just kick the... What you want to do is get good contact between root, ball and soil by just packing it in. I'm, I'm obviously doing it in an economic way. I'm, I've got to do 500 for the day, so I'm not spending time sprinkling it in, getting the same outcome I get good contact if that plant is sitting loose in there it's no good the wind would dry the root ball out but if it's nicely touching the, the soil that's all you want you notice I drag the material down below I might of course often in the past I've caused controversy by saying to my um, employees when they don't do that properly that if you're in Tasmania you should know how to build a dam 
<laughs> that's that's what that is. Is a little a little dam. Uh, so if you had to come back and water, you've actually got a, a bit of a depression here that when you pour some water onto it, it can actually catch there. <laughs>